All right, thank you for joining us this morning. It seems interesting every time I plan a press conference, we end up with some competition, but that's fine. I wanna thank you for being here this morning. Earlier this year, I introduced the Violence Against Pregnant Women Act to address a critical fault in our criminal justice system. In recent Canadian history, over 80 women have been killed while pregnant. Each of these women were killed by men who knew that they were pregnant. Their killers intentionally sought to do harm to the pregnant woman, and in most cases, to end her pregnancy. Many other Canadian women have also faced assaults that harm them in the vulnerable state of pregnancy. It's well established that the risk of violence against women increases when they're pregnant. However, our justice system is failing to consistently take these actions into account and it's time to change that. The Violence Against Pregnant Women Act will amend the criminal code to ensure that the act of knowingly assaulting a pregnant woman and causing physical or emotional harm to a pregnant woman are considered aggravating circumstances during the sentencing process. Judges would be required to consider these new aggravating factors when issuing criminal sentences. You know what, you guys, Canada needs this Violence Against Pregnant Women Act. We need to ensure that criminals who attack or kill a pregnant woman can be sentenced appropriately by our courts. The sentence should match the crime. I'm also humbled and very honored this morning to be joined by individuals who understand more than anyone the pain of this immense loss. My friend Jeff Durham lost Cassie and Molly. Cassie was his partner and Molly was the child they were expecting and Cassie was seven uh, months pregnant when an intruder was in her home, someone that actually she and Jeff both knew and in that moment of being discovered, he beat her to death and obviously at the same time ended the life of Molly and Jeff has lived with that circumstance and been very frustrated with the reality that when the sentence was brought down, this individual was convicted and sentenced, there was no recognition of the loss of Molly. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Chan and Sherry Goberton and their um, family are here and they've all been fighting very bravely for years in search of justice for their loved ones. So they join me today in hope that Parliament will make a bold stand for women who have faced violence and abuse when they were pregnant. So I know that Sherry uh, has a statement that she would like to bring forward at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Hi, Jeff. Hi, hello, everyone. I just wanted to talk a little bit about my daughter, Ariana, um, and my granddaughter, Sara. They were murdered on April 7, 2017. At the time, Ariana was 26 years old, and she was nine months pregnant at the time with her daughter, Asara. Um, the day that we found out and the day that, that she was killed, no charges were laid to the individual who murdered my daughter. Uh, when we had the sentencing in 2019, my family and I held a rally at the Oshawa Courthouse in order to bring life to the fact that my granddaughter was an actual human being. She was, seven, she was nine months at the time her mom gave birth to her. And when we cremated both of them, I held my granddaughter and she was, she was a human. She was seven and a half pounds. She had the most perfect features, long legs, long arms. She would have been just as beautiful as her mom. And for the law to tell me that he is not responsible for her death, her death is wrong. So I do appreciate what Kathy is doing but bringing forward this to Parliament to make sure that justice is served for all these women who have passed away and their children has already passed away. For us, we grieve two people, not just one. We grieve the life of my daughter and my granddaughter, who was a person. And to think that he is just getting away with one is not right. So for the 80 women who have passed on, may they rest in peace with their babies and hopefully some justice is served with respect to deterring the sentence, uh, uh, using this now to help with the sentencing process. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. And uh, Jeff would like to say a few words as well. 
Hi there, thanks. Uh, I just want to say that uh, I was witness to Cassie's choice to bring Molly into this world and th that this was, wasn't her choice. And to f argue that there shouldn't be represent representation for what she did choose isn't the pro-choice position. I, I think that everybody sees that on the surface and then maybe they choose where they go from there. But this wasn't Cassie's choice. And I just would like to ask anybody that takes an opposing position to acknowledging this problem how comfortable are they with that fact? And, or maybe they actually believe that these women chose this. How does, how does their brain work when they see this? Thanks. Sorry. All right, so thank you so much for being here. Uh, I'm more than pleased to take a few of your questions. Yes. Uh, there's been, you acknowledged it off the top, we just had an acknowledgement of the uh, fact that the Liberals are doing an event right now that deals with abortion laws right. in this country. I'd really like to hear from you how you see this piece of legislation in the context of your own views about abortion and the discussion in Canada. Well, what I can say is this has nothing to do with abortion. It has to do with women who are carrying their child, planning to carry them to term, and they are brutally murdered or assaulted in some cases where uh, an intimate partner or a gender-based violence situation occurs where they may just, um, oh, as an example, push a woman down the stairs. She may dislocate her shoulder but lose that child. The intent was there to cause that harm, but all that is considered then is, is a basic assault. And that's why we need to have our judges recognize um, that a third party has attacked a woman they knew were, was pregnant and that they have caused physical and emotional harm in that circumstance so that the sentences match the crime. I'm really pleased to say um, the majority of Canadians want to see this happen. And when I first brought forward Cassie and Molly's law, it, which this had as part of uh, the expectations, and I called Jeff, having learned about what happened to Cassie, um, and he said, you know, Kathy, um, I am pro-choice, so is Cassie. And I, I, brand new member, I just said, hey, that's perfect, I'm pro-life. And that's not what this is about, and yet continually, I think as Jeff was trying to say, other parties, other leaders are using that as a weapon in a circumstance where these people are suffering and have lost significantly. And that needs to stop because Canadians are irritated and frustrated by that kind of behavior. They want to see this law brought into place. Some critics uh, might say, and I don't want to minimize the tragedy that you guys went through, but some critics might say that this could be a roundabout way to give a legal status to the fetus. And that's one of the issues that is being raised. Is, is it not the possibility that it could open uh, from no. a legal standpoint? From a legal I mean, standpoint, absolutely not. No, it's all focused on the fact that the woman is attacked by someone who knows that she's pregnant and then they also cause physical and emotional harm to her in the case of an assault or in this case, the, the extreme of taking her life. And in that situation, because she's pregnant, our justice system is not required to recognize that additional stress and pain that she's in. I've had people in the House of Commons in the scenario of Ukraine talk about the brutality that's going on there and mention that pregnant women are being shot as an example and how terrible that was. Well, let's carry that forward in domestic law as well. In Canada, our criminal code does not require uh, this as aggravating circumstances, and it should be. The most vulnerable state a woman can possibly be in is pregnant, and that is when she is most vulnerable. So, I wonder, just if, perhaps in my last question is just, uh, 
the Liberals are having this news conference across the street, and you know that going forward in the next election, they are going to try to strike a real contrast between your party and their party, their attempts to strengthen access to abortion in this country, uh, versus the fact that there are many in your caucus that share anti-abortion views. What would you say about that? I would say it's really important that our media do their research because 70% of Canadians in the Nick Nanos poll that went with my first bill want this as an aggravating factor, which is totally separate from that conversation. And 73% of women want it in Canada. So they are not reflecting the views of Canadians on this issue. And we can certainly at any time sit down and discuss and have debate and talk about any issue. That's our responsibility. But to simply use it as a wedge um, Canadians are done with that. Is uh, your leader in, in favor of the, uh, the proposition? Guy? Yes. Yes, so we told you so. And do you know how the vote will occur? All, do you know if all the Conservative MPs will vote for it? Uh, what, um, what do you uh, Well, our, our party is different. We um, give people the freedom to vote their conscience on these types of issues. We don't whip our vote, as you see, happens pretty well everywhere else in the House. And so um, what I said to the leader, I'm really pleased to have his support. And obviously, when the leader supports something, that's significant. But it was really important to me that we still make it very clear that this is a vote of conscience. And uh, that's something that we very much hold dear in our party. Uh, well, I want to ask you to introduce a previous bill, Cassie and Molly's Law, and then Ken App had introduced a bill that would also uh, put, put this into law. How is this piece of legislation different in mm -hmm. the sense that the other two bills didn't pass? Right. What is different about this one to ensure that it has a greater chance right. of passing? Um, well, it absolutely should pass. There is absolutely no reason anyone in the House of Commons should not be supporting this bill because it is focused on pregnant women being attacked by a third party who wants to cause injury or death to that individual. So first of all, there is no reason for anyone in the House of Commons to not support this. Um, as well, I would say that um, the difference is this is very, very honed and very specific. Um, I have responded to what I heard, not just from the pro-life community, from the pro-choice community, from Canadians who are in the middle somewhere, that they get what this is about. And uh, it's really important, I think, that this House wake up and listen to what Canadians want in regard to pregnant women. So you say that no one should oppose this bill, yet the Abortion Rights Coalition of Canada put out a paper titled Six Reasons to Oppose Bill C-311, and one of them, they note your motivations are suspect because of your previous introduction of uh, right. C-233. Uh, what's your response to that? My response is uh, very, fairly thorough, and it's in the debate. So I will be responding to Joyce's comments at that point in time and i um, very pleased to do so. Joyce actually supported this section of Cassie and Molly's law when it was brought in. She said she would support the bill if this was the only part in it. Well, here we are, and she's playing games. Well, have you spoken to any Liberal or NDP MPs yes. about this bill, and what have they told you? Um, you know, I'm going to leave it up to them to decide what they want to say and whether or not they're going to do what they should and support the bill. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate it.